Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, young lads, and young lattices. Welcome. Today, as you see by the title, I'm going to talk about the origins of all 30 NHL team names by Alan Scott. If you don't know about the sport, NHL means National Hockey League. Alright, so before I begin going over the different team names, let me go over a little brief background history. Hockey, according to my research, is the oldest sport. Therefore, since it's the oldest sport, it probably doesn't have a definitive date of when Someone can say, this is the first day of a hockey game. No definitive date. But, in 1773, the first record, or the first recording of the use of hockey. So, the first time the word hockey was ever used was way, way, way back then, long ago. 1773. Many early cultures, including Egypt, played curved sticks and a ball. But you know in Egypt, where it's so hot at, they don't have much ice out there. So they probably played it on the, uh, uh, on, on the sand or some type of pavement. But they did use curved sticks just like in hockey and a ball, not a puck. I'm going to have to do research when it was called a puck and not a ball anymore. Yeah, because a ball is round and a puck, if you've seen hockey, the puck, it has that elliptical shape. It has, well, it's basically like a cylinder. Yeah, a hockey puck is basically a cylinder. Alright, its predecessor be before becoming an N NHL was called the N8 Association. And it goes way back before any of us, any of us was born, 1917. Now, I, the author, the speaker, lives in the United States. In my particular country, there are four major sports that can make someone rich. There are a lot of other little subsidiary sports, but there are four that can make or give an athlete great wealth. They are, of course, hockey, baseball, basketball, and American version of football. Those are the cornerstone sports in this country where if the winning team wins the particular championship, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fans will va ravage the streets and cause an uproar and celebration of their, of their team victory. So those are the main sports. Okay, so let me start. This particular um, site is about how did the teams get their names? Where did the names come from? Who gave it to them? How long ago was it when the name was derived? Did fans participate, or did the owner just pull a name out of a hat and say, I'm going to call the team this name? Let's see with our first team. All right, Columbus Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets was the winning entry in a name the team contest. According to the team's website, the name celebrates patriotism. As you can see by the colors, red, white, and blue. So I'm sure they live in uh are residing in the United States. Pride and a rich Civil War history in the state of Ohio, and more specifically, the city of Columbia. Ohio contributed more residents to the Union Army than any other state during the Civil War. So, if you come from another country, this is basically talking about the American Civil War, and it may not have much meaning to you. If you live in the United States, the Civil War Regardless of your ethnic group, it does have some type of meaning for you. 
New York Rangers. In 1925, the New York Americans joined the National Hockey League and played their home games at the old Madison Square Garden. Tex Richard, the boxing promoter and ex gold prosecutor who built and owned the arena, decided he wanted his own National Hockey League team, which he was awarded in 1926. Oh, so shortly after the team moved there, the team got their name. Richard's team was immediately dubbed Texas Rangers. Yes, Texas basically is a state famous for having their particular Rangers there, their law enforcement utilities. As a pun, represent the paramilitary force founded in Texas during the 1830s. The Americans folded in 1942, while Texas Rangers remained. And when they said the Americans folded, we are talking about, in this case, the New York Americans. Okay. Next, New Jersey Devils. Given that New Jersey has never known been known for its mountains, the team needed an, a new nickname after the Colorado Rockies relocated to the Garden State in 1982. Okay, that's recent. Well, according to me. The New Jersey Sports and Exhibition Authority sponsored a statewide newspaper contest. Okay, so the owner didn't put a name on a hat. He got the fans involved. To determine the new nickname and some of the other finalists included Americans, unoriginal, because we live in the United States, and New Jersey is a state of the United States, Blades, that's a good name for a hockey team, Coastals, I guess because New Jersey is on the East Coast, and Colonials, going back to the Civil War, Gauls, Jaguars, Meadowlanders, that's a good name because New, New Jersey is a Meadowland state, and Meadowlocks. While some fans objected to the winning selection on religious grounds because it's called the Devils, a demonic evil force, one threatened the life of a reporter who was covering the search. The Devil has an entirely non-religious folk history in New Jersey. According to legend, a harmless creature known as the Leeds Devil, can name it the animal, or the Jersey Devil, roamed the Pine Barrens in southern part of the state from 1887 until 1938. So what are you, what are you telling me? Has this tree, has this creature been killed? Is it extinct now? New York Islanders. When New York expansion Major League Baseball franchise held a name the team contest, okay, connected to another sport in 1961, Islanders finished third behind Mets and Empires. I guess the name after the Empire State Building. I guess during that time, the Empire State Building was probably the tallest building in New York City. Eleven years later, Islanders were selected as the nickname for New York's new hockey team. Wow, eleven years later. So what was the car before that? Which plays its home game on Long Island. Philadelphia Flyers. And that's a nice jazzy name. The team sponsored a name the team contest after Ed Snyder, then vice president of the Philadelphia Eagles. Connection to football again. Okay, because hockey is a brutal sport. If you know anything about hockey, it's close to... It's a, it's a man-handling sport where the players collide and rough each other up a lot. Brought hockey back to the city of Buddy Love in 1966. Okay. Snyder's sister, Phyllis... Mm -hmm. Reportedly suggested the name Flyers, which sounded good when paired with Philadelphia, but doesn't have any real meaning. Okay, so in this case, the wealthy lady, his sister, basically just guessed the name and said Flyers. And he said, okay, we're going to go with Flyers. It's a good name. Ignore the fans. Flyers is it. Because I love my sister. So he chose Flyers. Pittsburgh Penguins. If, if you are living in uh, North America, these Pittsburgh penguin colors, they're the same colors as the American football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yellow and black. I wonder what's the connection there. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette sponsored a name the team contest. But Carl McGregor, the wife of one of the franchise's part owners, 
Jack McGregor was the one responsible for the nickname. Okay, another woman. A wife. Before it was a sister, now it's a wife. In his book, Pittsburgh Penguins, the official history of the first 30 years, Bob Grove describes how Carl McGregor came up with the name. Here she go. Quote, I was thinking of something with a P. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Basically pulling the name out the hat. And I said to Jack, what do they call Civic Arena? And he said, the big igloo. So I thought, hmm, a P, ice, Pittsburgh, penguins. More than 700 of the 26,000 contact entries were for penguins. So I guess they gave everybody a list and they had to take a vote. And the people chose penguins in honor of their civics arena. Moving right on. Boston Bruins. Again. In this, in this case, the team not a tie. They are not tied to the NFL franchise team in Boston colors. When grocery store tycoon Charles Adams brought a team to Boston, he hired former hockey great Art Ross to serve as his general manager. Adams tasked Ross with coming up with a nickname. So he didn't so the owner didn't choose a nickname. He gave it to his assistant, Mr. Ross. With one of the requirements being that the team's colors would be the same as his grocery store chains. Okay, okay. So I guess his grocery stores have the colors yellow and black and white. Brown and yellow. Ross decided on Bruins. I wonder what does that mean? Does it have any name? Any mean it didn't describe a meaning to us, so what does the word Bruins mean? I guess we can do research on that, my friends. Alright, Buffalo Sabres. I never heard of this team. When Buffalo entered the league in 1970, owners Seymour Knox III and North Up Knox, okay, a family, wanted the nickname for their new team to be unique. Okay, that is a unique name. Sabres It's a dangerous, prehistoric creature. It is, it, that's a good name. That new team to be unique. The brother sponsored a name the team contest and decided on Sabres. Sabres. With a Buffalo feature prominently and the team's logo. I thought a saber was a cat. They choosing the buffalo. I guess they mean saber. I see they got them swords there. It's, named, it's not named after that prehistoric or the saber tooth tiger. It's not named after that. I guess it's called saberies for those swords there. And this team is connected to the buffalo football because it's in 1970. And at that time, Buffalo definitely had an NFL team there, which has it's called the Buffalo Bills. So the Buffalo NHL team borrowed that Buffalo insignia. Signia. Montreal, Montreal Canadiens. That's a nice name. In 1909, John Ambrose O'Brien created the club, the Hockey Canadian. Ambrose wanted his team, a charter member of the National Hockey Association, to appeal to Montreal's fanophone population. And he hoped to drum up a rivalry with the city established team. Okay, so they had two hockey teams. The Wanderers and the Canadians. The Canadians are often referred to as a as the Habs or Les Habs. An abbreviation of Les Habitants. The name for the early settlers of New France. As I was thinking, it sounded like a, a French name. Moving right on. Ottawa Senators. The original Ottawa Senators, founded in 1883, won 11 Stanley Cups. Wow! When, a, when an NHL team returned to Ottawa in 1992 after a nearly 60-year hiatus, the nickname, a reference to Ottawa's status as Canada's capital city, was an obvious choice. So that's wonderful. The city was, it was gone for nearly 60 years, but they gave it the same name. When they gave it the same name, they carried the same tradition as the original team that was there 60 years ago. So they still had their 11 NHL titles. Because you know, if you go to a, when a, a team leave a city and they get a new team, if they give it a new name, they lose their heritage or those championship banners of the team that left. 
the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I, I see Canada has a lot of hockey teams there. So it's a, it's a split between the United States and Canada. So the National Hockey League, that's a, that's a good league. They, they, they basically cross border. They are a league between two countries. I know the NBA once had two teams in Canada. Now they just have one. But the National Hockey League has a diverse amount of teams in both countries. Toronto Maple Leafs. Karn Smythe purchased Toronto's hockey team in 1927. And one of his first orders of business was renaming the team. The franchise that began play as the Arenas on original in 1719, I mean in 1917, changed its nickname to St. Patrick's. Okay. In 1919 to attract Toronto's Irish population, as I guess. Smith eventually sided on Maple Leafs for a couple possible reasons. Smith fought in the Maple Leaf Regiment, okay, during World War II. And there was a former hockey team called the East Maple Leaves. <clears throat> but there's a difference. His team is called Maple Leaves. And this team is called Maple Leaves. And when he was a soldier, the team was called, I mean, you know, the military company was called the Maple Leaf. So he probably got the name right from that military company or regiment. All right, Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets formed in late 1971, so not too long ago. Got their moniker from a team of the same name that played in Canada's Western Hockey League. Another hockey league at that time. The current franchise is actually the second incarnation. The first relocated to Phoenix, Arizona, a hot area in the United States, in 1996, recent, and became the Phoenix Coyotes. That's a good name. The current franchise was originally called the Atlanta Thrashers. That's a nice name. It sounds violent, warrior-like. Named by Ted Turner, a billionaire, after Georgia State Bird, the Brown Thrasher, before it was sold to a Canadian group. True North Sports and Entertainment in 2011 and relocated. Okay, so this is recent. The Carolina Hurricanes. After the Hartford Whalers moved to Raleigh in 1997, a new owner, Peter Carmonos Jr., named his team after the devastating storms that regularly ravaged the region. Okay, that's, that's right. Because Carolina, which is on the East Coast, frequently has some type of hurricane hitting the area. But it's not as much as Florida. But hurricanes come there for at least once every three years that's a nice name and again hurricanes are strong mighty and fierce forces so the team is named after a fierce and mighty force of nature Florida Panthers had Tampa Bay been awarded a baseball team in the early 1990s they would likely would have been called the Florida Panthers a reference to the endangered species of the same name. Instead, the nickname was, was adopted by Florida's second, okay, they had a team before, NHL team, when Panthers president Bill Torre revealed the nickname. He told reporters, a panther, for your information, is the quickest striking of all cats. Hopefully, that's how we'll be on the ice. Quick, fast, furious. Next. Tampa Bay Lightning. So I see a lot of these teams have originated in the 90s or 1970s or the late 19 or the late 20th century. In 1990, a thunderstorm served as inspiration for the then president of the Tampa Bay Hockey Group, Phil Esperitos, the decision to name his team the Lightning. So I guess it was severe lightning storm those at that time. Esposito said that in addition to being a natural characteristic of the Tampa Bay area, I guess they have a lot of lightning storms, lightning expressed the fast action of a hockey game. Lightning is fast. It's illuminating. It caused terror. It's respected. It's feared. As you will want your team to be. In any sport, 
That's a good original name. Lightning. It looked like the Flash symbol. If anybody look like know about comic books, that lightning bolt. It looked like the Flash lightning bolt from DC Comics. Moving on. Washington Capitals. Washington owner A. Poland, may he rest in peace, decided on a perfectly apt name, Capitals. Yes, that's a that's a nice name because if you if you if you do not live in the United States, the capital of the United States is Washington D.C. So they called the Washington Capitals. Nicknamed Capitals after a stage, a name the team contest. The Chicago Blackhawks. Nice name. It sounds like a pirate name. World War One veteran and coffee tycoon Frederick McLaughlin was Chicago's owner when it entered the National Hockey League in 1926. McLaughlin. Named the team after the 86th Infantry Division in which he served. The Black Hawk Division was named after Chief Black Hawk of the Salt American Indian Tribe who fought the Illinois Militia in 1832. The nickname was officially changed from Black Hawks, which is a space between it as you see, to Black Hawks, one word, in 1986. So, I'm glad they're giving some homage to the Native Americans who lived in America. So thank you for doing that, Chicago Blackhawks, for taking the Native American into consideration and naming your team. Detroit Red Wings. After purchasing the Detroit Falcons in 1932, James Norris renamed the team after the Wing Wheelers. That's a weak name. The nickname of the Montreal Hockey Club for which he once played. Okay, so this owner was a former player, which is rare. Norris chose a wing wheel as the team's logo. A nod to Detroit's growing reputation as the heart of the automobile industry. Yes, if you know anything about the United States, Detroit, once upon a time, I don't know about today, was the foundation for most of Americans automobile entry like I mean, I mean I believe Ford Chevy I forgot the others Ford Chevy and not so that's how I can remember now I'm not a big car person Ford Chevy hmm. okay if you all know the other names the other I think it was called the big four or the big three in Detroit Ford Chevy I forgot the third one it probably come to me later Alright, Nashville Predators. That's a wonderful name. As you see by his logo, a deadly saber tooth tiger, which allegedly was a fierce predator in his day. I wasn't there. I don't even know if it really existed. But we had the bones to say they existed in the old museum. A vote by the fans helped determine a Nashville nickname. A reference to the saber tooth. Tiger remains that were discovered during an excavation in a city in 1971. So I guess they found it. They found the remains, and shortly thereafter, they gave the team the name Predators. All right, St. Louis Blues. According to the team's website, owner Sid Solomon Jr. selected the nickname Blues in 1967. After W.C. Handy's song, St. Louis Blues, a jazz song, Mercury and Apollo were two of the other nicknames that were considered. Okay, so let's see when they name them after, um, what's these, Greek, Roman gods, or a combination of names. Apollo, that's a good name. I don't know about Mercury, but Apollo, that sounds nice. Calgary Flames. Okay, I like the little icon up here. It looks 3D-like. That C right there, the burning C. The Flames played in Atlanta from 1972 until 1980. And their name, nickname was a reference to the burning of Atlanta by General William Term Sherman during the Civil War. Okay, a lot of these teams have been in for something during the Civil War. While the team moved, the nickname remained. So the nickname stayed in that city. If another hockey league came, if another NHL team came in the city, boom, they got that name. 
Calgary Flames. Colorado Avalanche. Oh, that's a lot of reading. Woo! The Rockies, the nickname for Colorado's hockey team that left for New Jersey in 1982, had been adopted by Denver's baseball team. By the time the Quebec Nordos left Canada for the Fort Range in 1995, management originally wanted to name the team Extreme. Okay, that's a nice name. But received all sorts of negative feedback. And justifiably so. Avalanche, which is a deadly force of nature again. It, it elicited fear, terror, and respect. Okay, which was the team to have. Which eventually beat out Black Bears. That's a nice name. Outlaws. Weak. Storm. Weak. Wranglers. Weak. Renegades. That's okay. Rapids. That's alright. And Cougars. A common name. Drew some criticism as well, given their deadly nature. A member of the marketing group responsible for the name of the team replied, This is the NHL, a rough and tough sport, like American football. And the avalanche is a something that matches the, the on the edge feel they want to create. Like I said, it's a death an avalanche. It elicits fear. It makes you run. It's devastating. You want to get away from it. As I'm sure the avalanche team want other teams to fear them. Hey, cougars and bears kills people too. People shouldn't get so excited about Avalanche being a disrespected name or something. It's just a name. I like Avalanche. And it sounds original. Edmonton Oilers. Let's see what he got their name from. Edmonton, the capital of Alberta. It's also the oil capital of Canada. Okay, so oil capital of Canada. So they called it Oilers. Edmonton began play in 1972 in the World Hockey Association and retained the name Oilers when it rejoined or joined the Hockey League in 1979. Vancouver Canucks. That's an original name. What's a Canuck? We shall see. Johnny Connect, okay, then up to the owner, who originally appeared as a Canadian political cartoon character. Okay, I guess his name is, I'm sorry, not the owner, but a cartoon character. In 1869, was invented as a comic book action hero who fought Adolf Hitler, like Captain America, among other villains during the World War II. Canuck is also slang for Canadian, making Vancouver's hockey team the Canadian equivalent of the New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. With, with a little less money, of course, because the Yankee, I'm sure they worth a couple billion dollars. Dallas Stars. Let's see what he got that name from. I guess they copy up the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys had that star symbol on their helmet. It looked like the exact same star if you look at the football team. The exact same star with just a green color. Hmm. When the Minnesota North Stars, okay, it came from Minnesota, was nicknamed, was decided by a fan contest, moved to Texas in 1993, they ditched the North and didn't feel compelled to replace it with South or Lone. Because Texas is a, called the Lone Star State. Or is that San Antonio? Hmm. Los Angeles Kings. Why they got that crown there? I guess they, they, they name, it's some of the it's some like a Sacramento King. Hmm. Let me see. The late Jack Kent Cook, may he rest in peace, who owned the Los Angeles Lakers and later the Washington Redskins, settled on Kings as a nickname from entries submitted in a fan contest. So he picked the name out of a, a, a hat allegedly or whatever. The Los Angeles Monarchs played in the Pacific Coast Hockey League. During the 1930s, and Cook's new team adopted the same royal color scheme as the Lakers. Purple and gold or yellow. But from this, but from this, uh, I guess at that time, the Lakers probably was black then. But when he moved to Los Angeles, they got that purple, gold, or yellow. Anaheim Ducks. That's a nice little name. It's like a cartoon character name. Quack, 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 quack. Anaheim joined the National Hockey League in 1993. Recently, 
and his team was known as the Mighty Ducks. Isn't that the name of a Disney, uh, a Disney movie? After the wildly popular Disney movie, uh huh, and cross marketing vehicle of the same name, the name nickname was changed to Ducks, and the logo was changed in 2005 after Disney sold the team. Okay, so Disney once owned this team, huh? So they do have to write the name of the team after any of their characters. Is that right? And look, and the way that duck, it looked like a Disney duck bill. Okay, that's a repeat. The Phoenix Coyotes. The Winnipeg Jets moved to Phoenix in 1996, recently, and the Coyotes was the winner and a nickname named the team contest that attracted more than 10,000 entries. Scorpions was the runner-up. All right, Coyotes, that's a nice name. It's a nice name. I guess because of Scorpions, it's a deadly creature, but it seems too primitive. Most, uh, and I notice this, most teams are not named after no insects. They named after a warm-blooded rotabrae cre creature. None of them named after no insects, in my, res in my recollection. All right, San Joe's Sharks. You see right there, it looks deadly. Shark was chosen from 2,300 entries in San Joe's named the team contest. The other finalists included Rubber, Puckies, Pathetic, Screaming Squares, again, Pathetic, Salty Dugs, even more Pathetic, and the Blades. Mm-hmm, that's decent. Blaze was the most popular entry, but ultimately rejected because of its gang implication. Yes, Blade, like nah, cutting somebody, killing a person. You right, Blade. When the nickname was chosen, seven shark species made their home in a stretch of the Pacific Ocean off the Carolina coast called the Red Triangles. So that's a nice name to the sharks. Okay, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you like my uh, present the National Hockey League. I hope I honor the league. I hope I didn't uh, embarrass the league in any way. If you like my uh, com, if you like my content, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to uh, subscribe for future content, please join the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for giving me some, most of your precious time. Cause I know the video is probably lengthy. You all have a wonderful day. Remember, thumbs up. I want them. I need them. Good day.